Hi, it's 3DS Capture Card owner extraordinaire me, Scott Wozniak. Let's look at the eShop. So yes, I officially own a 3DS Capture Card now. Yes, I'm one of those people. Um, well, I've, I owned one back in, um, in 2018. I bought one. It was a new 2DS XL Capture Card unit that you could plug in, plug a micro USB mini, I'm pretty sure it was micro USB, micro USB into the 2DS and then plug that 2DS into your computer and you could record all your footage and it was brilliant, it was wonderful. It was as wonderful as a new 2DS XL uh, could be. Uh, which isn't that wonderful because I don't like those models, but uh, it, did, it did everything perfectly fine. And then I think I yanked the cord out too hard one day and then it stopped working. It, it works perfectly fine as a regular 2DS, but uh, it doesn't connect to the computer. So uh, I scrambled trying to find uh, a new capture card unit. Uh, nobody makes them anymore. I assume eventually like 50 years down the line, we'll, we'll have technology great enough to uh, to record 3DS uh, 3DS screens again, but for now nobody's making 3DS uh, 3DS capture cards. It's pretty it's pretty rough. Um, so I had to uh, scour eBay for this thing, um, and uh, this is what I came up with. It is a 2DS. It is an original 2DS, and the bottom screen is 90% of the time incredibly fuzzy. Sometimes it isn't. Uh, this time it is, alongside most other times, uh, but whatever, it does the job, you see, like, look at that, it, it works perfectly fine, so, I was like, hey, I mean, I might as well get a bunch of footage of 3DS stuff while I still can, because if this thing goes the way of my original 2DS capture card, uh, I am extremely boned, uh, so I might as well just get as much 3DS footage as I can, and that includes checking out the eShop, and there's a, there's a lot of fun stuff on this eShop, I remember... Um, it originally didn't show up with the 3DS at launch. It was, it, it came out in June, uh, which was very strange because they didn't really have much on the eShop other than, um, they had all, they had most of the DSiWare stuff, which was really cool. Um, and they had Game Boy, Game Boy Color games on Virtual Console. Not a ton. It was stuff like Mario Land, uh, maybe like Alleyway or something. And like Link's Awakening. I think Link's Awakening was like the only Game Boy Color game available. Um, and then they had like 3D Classic uh, Excite Bike. Um, and that was about it, which was really strange. They didn't have that available at launch, but it's whatever. Um, and the music is different, I know that. Uh, the, the cool thing about this and the Wii U eShops is that they changed the music quite a bit. Um, I believe the Wii U eShop changed far more frequently. But uh, this one, this one's definitely new. This one definitely has a new ring to it. But let's uh, let's check out all the uh, all the fun little categories. We have Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. There's a demo available if you needed to be sold on that. Um, I bought this game because uh, I <laughs> I love how I my reasoning for buying that game follow was followed by an uh um, because I think. <sighs> I don't think it was on sale. I think I got it because I had, like, a gift card to, like, Best Buy or something. And I was like, eh, this game is probably going to be hard to find in a couple years. And it's kind of cool. It's a kind of cool release. Like, I, I always find it kind of um, charming to see this kind of stuff, like, show up on, like, handhelds. And I know we have the Switch, you know. I, I, by this kind of stuff, I mean, like, stuff that was originally home console games. Like, Kirby's Epic Yarn was just a home console game um i i i'm pausing because uh the music stopped <laughs> what what the what what the hell <laughs> this is playing like different music now <laughs> okay okay whatever kirby's extra epic yarn okay i find it pretty cool when uh when they put this kind of stuff on 3ds the problem is it came out in 2019 and like no like barely anybody was asking for this but i still find it like kind of charming to have these on like just lesser powerful portables um i was recently going through like my game boy color games and i played like donkey kong country on the game boy color and i was like man this is this is easily not as good but it's still pretty this is still pretty uh pretty neat to see um, 
But yeah, let's see. You could rate stuff? 450 people rated that? That is obscenely low. I, I would always use the ratings on like the Wii U eShop to gauge like how many people actually bought a game, even though it, it's definitely a fraction of the people who bought it who actually go through the trouble of rating it on the eShop. But uh, only 450, That that is pretty low for like a, a big Nintendo release like this. Well, big, whatever, it's, it's a 2010 Wii game. And this one, I think Kirby at least, I, I think more people at least remembered that Kirby came out. This Bowser's Inside Story was like one of the most forgettable things Nintendo's done in the re in recent years that featured like Mario. Um, I, I just found this very odd that they would do this. Um, I know why they did it, because they wanted, like, a super simple, um, like, uh, not, like, super simple, but just easy, easy game to make, you know, this was, like, hey, it's just a remake, you're reusing assets from the Superstar Saga remake, um, and, you know, it, it's also a remake, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to work that much on it, um, but this is a game that you could already play, on the 3DS because it was a DS game. And that was always kind of like, that, that's always kind of like one of my pet peeves with some remakes. When, like, take for example, you had like Twilight Princess HD on the Wii U. And my main problem with that was that you could already play Twilight Princess on the Wii. Like, of course it was in Wii graphics and you had to use the Wii remote, but I would have preferred if they like went through the trouble of remaking a game that you couldn't already play on the wii u like four swords adventures or mario sunshine or other gamecube stuff like f-zero gx um and that kind of stuff like this this just seems incredibly pointless to me just because like you know this game didn't nobody was begging for a remake of this because like it, nobody was like oh man you know we need that on the 3ds again <laughs> um but I also did buy this. I think I bought this alongside Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. And I know I said uh, this was a forgettable game, but uh, it had more ratings than Kirby. So I'll, I'll admit my mistake there. Luigi's Mansion. Okay, now uh, I would have preferred if this was, this was on the Switch, obviously. I don't think anybody would deny that. But this is also a pretty cool one to see. Like, this is just, like, it's charming to see these, like, games portable for the first time you know and i i feel that more with the 3ds and with the switch it, it's more charming to see like something like luigi's mansion running on the 3ds than it is on the switch because like you look at the switch and you're like oh well, yeah no doubt that Lu luigi's mansion could run on the switch but it, it's a little it's a little more charming on the 3ds i i would prefer it on the switch but i think it's more interesting and charming on the 3ds because they also have like the dual screen set up there um you know they had to do more with that you have the, the game boy horror on there 2000 ratings yeah they just started to plummet into 2019 detective pikachu that's one that i keep forgetting even came out <laughs> um what was that a special demo yeah, I never picked this one up, except this was like a Pokemon game that always intrigued me, but I heard that it was it was pretty basic. Um I'm just I was just like, yeah, like I'm I'm interested I'm still interested in trying that out at some point, but again, apparently it's coming to Switch or like a sequel is coming. I, I, I don't know. Um let's see. Got to check out the Nintendo Selects. And it used Mario 3D World art to advertise it. Why not? I love Mario 3D World for the Nintendo 3DS. There's Super Mario Maker. That's another one. Again, best way to describe that. It is charming <laughs> that that game is on 3DS. It's not great. Um, but it's it's weird. It, it's really cool to see like something like New Super Mario Bros. U downgraded to Mario. Like, it just feels like... It, it feels like it's just such a weird it's just a it's such a bizarre thing to see mar new super mario brothers u the wii u game downgraded to run on the 3ds when they could have just used like new super mario brothers 2 as like the art style with that there was so much there was so much weird with this game <laughs> it was just so bizarre because like um 
it like it it was a pretty competent version up until the fact that you couldn't share your levels online you could only access wii u ones and you couldn't even search for specific ones i think you all you could do is just look at like the recommendeds like i don't even i can't even i i can't fathom that even being like a technical issue with the 3ds like they were trying to get that working on the 3ds but they were like oh man 3ds can't run this like no i i feel like they just they were just like oh well let's let's make the wii u version somewhat like like let's keep it somewhat relevant or something like that i don't know i i see no reason why like you couldn't have done certain things on mario maker 3ds that like it's ridiculous i didn't know majora's mask was a nintendo select i never played this one but i do know people uh a lot of people are are considering it to be not a great version of Majora's Mask. They uh, they altered a bit here and there. But I wouldn't know. But it was really cool to see that actually come out because uh, the majority of the 3DS's life, like halfway, uh, halfway through its life, was talking about a Majora's Mask uh, 3D remake. Star Fox 64 3D is a cool one, uh, like, that it got a Nintendo Select, because that got kind of hard to find, I remember, um, it, it, because, like, it was originally released at launch, and you know for a fact they stopped printing copies of it at some point, uh, but then they brought it back, so that was pretty cool, um, I remember it being pretty good, um, like, they definitely added some cool stuff, and it looks a lot better, um, but I still, I still think I would prefer playing it on the N64, just because I think I, I think I would just prefer playing it on N64 at the moment on a home console. We have Mario 3D Land. I I very much like Mario 3D Land. It, it's like it's great comfort food. Like it's nothing mind blowing. Um, I remember reviews at the time. I think people were just, I think people were just very much thirsty for like an experience that was worthy of buying a 3ds and i feel like people were praising this game so much and it did do a lot of cool stuff with the 3d but i don't like what it did never really like set any major trends i feel um like it's just like yeah it, it did it did a lot cool with 3d but it it's like one of those things where i don't know like this is it's it's weird to describe. I feel like it's kind of like Star Fox Zero. I, I mean, I I like 3D Land a lot more than Star Fox Zero, but Star Fox Zero, a lot of people said like, oh man, the control scheme is so good once you get used to it. Like, you know, like everything is so well designed around it. And like my stance with it is, um, this game was designed with the limitations of um, working between those two screens, and to that extent, Mario 3D Land, I feel like it was designed in within like the constraints of being on the 3ds so they made it so then like it was it was easier to gauge depth with the 3d effect on i'm actually talking out of my ass right now i just realized what i said was really stupid <laughs> just uh, uh disregard that you ever just say something completely stupid then you're like man it's a good thing i write most of the stuff i say before i say it online let's see there's A Link Between Worlds, which I absolutely adore. I love A Link Between Worlds. I think this game is phenomenal. 58,000? That's unbelievable. There's Ultimate NES Remix. I loved Ultimate NES Remix because I remember them saying NES Remix couldn't run on the 3DS. <laughs> and then, like, a year later, they put out Ultimate NES Remix, which this is, like, this is, like, the best way to play NES Remix, in my opinion. Um... It just works so well on the handheld, and uh, they they cut out a lot of the fat. It's pretty much like they took the best stuff from NES Remix 1 and NES Remix 2, and they just combined it all together into this game. And uh, I think I think it's the uh, I think it's the best way to play it. Animal Crossing New Leaf, welcome amiibo. I remember this game had like a weird release where um they did uh. They did the Welcome Amiibo update, and then um, 
they they released welcome amiibo as its own game like as in like they released the game alongside the up like the game with the update on the cart just standard like it, that was just the way animal crossing new leaf was sold from then on out and then like two months later they released it as a 3ds nintendo selects so i don't know if like the welcome amiibo version that's not nintendo selects is like kind of rare now but like that's one thing where i'm kind of like i'm i kind of assume that it might be a little harder to find we just mentioned dark moon i haven't played like a ton of ton of dark moon but like i can tell like the problems people had with it but uh it was still really cool to see we just mentioned come back and it was only 20 dollars. they had a lot of nintendo selects jeez especially mario party island tour come on you can't you can't have the 3ds without island tour in this ultimate showdown you can take on the road blaze through the seven new game boards you see i was expecting this game to be something completely different with those first few words it's 19,000 ratings not bad there's nintendo i never played nintendogs plus cats which uh, is always it's going to be something I'm going to take to my grave. I played a little bit of Lego City Undercover on 3DS. Um, I think I downloaded it back in the day because I kind of wanted like an... I, I thought it was a cool idea to have like an open world game on the 3DS. It wasn't that great, but um, you know, I mean, it was still... It, it was Lego City Undercover to an extent on the 3DS. The problem was it didn't have like a lot of the voice acting... Like, it had some, but it most of the game didn't have it. And I feel like that's that was one of the most charming things about LEGO City Undercover on the Wii U. Uh, I love Tomodachi Life. I hope they make a new one. That'd be great. Mario & Luigi Dream Team. That's probably the best Mario & Luigi on, uh, on 3DS. Uh, at least in the new ones. I mean, there's only that in Paper Jam. But yeah, Kirby Triple Deluxe. I like Triple Deluxe. It's... It's a little generic Kirby E. Like, um, out of like the four in this style that they made, which is Return to Dreamland, Triple Deluxe, um, Planet Robobot, and Star Allies, uh, the, uh, like, three of the four of those are so damn similar in terms of, like, theming. And, like, it, it just feels very, like, oh, it's just generic Kirby. Um,. Like, Planet Robobot is the one that stands out, and that's my favorite. Um, Triple Deluxe is still really good. I remember beating that, and I was like, that was good. Um, Return to Dreamland was pretty good because it was like, you know, that that was like the first time we saw that franchise like that on a home console since, like, Kirby 64. So I think it was warranted to be kind of, like, a little more generic, and Triple Deluxe was like, okay, it's the second one, whatever. Um, and Planet Robobot uh took the took the series into a cool direction where it's just like okay this is the same thing but they added some cool stuff and they tweaked it and it's and it's different but it's still kirby and it's really cool um and then star allies just kind of brought it back <laughs> to uh to the more generic style and i was like mm, i don't know i hope i hope they switch things up soon warrior Wear gold is awesome <laughs> um it's not it, it's it's nothing like crazy because it's still like it's just it's just old WarioWare stuff, but I really love that they actually took advantage of the fact that this is on the 3DS. Um, they take advantage of pretty much all the 3DS features. It, it was probably like two years too late. I feel like if it came out in like 2016, like it would do, it would have done so much better. But uh, I really liked WarioWare Gold. I thought that was a that was like the last 3DS game that I that I um, picked up like at launch and I and I beat like within the first like week of owning it I, I really did enjoy that captain toad treasure tracker uh this should have been on 3ds from the start uh it, it was really weird to me because this game felt like it was like tailor-made for the 3ds um it's and i keep forgetting that it came out for the system i really do want to own this because it's also like that's also like a really cool thing that happened because like like i said it feels like it was tailor-made for the 3ds because like this is the kind of game that works really well in 3d i honestly feel like this game like is probably more suited for the 3ds than it is on the switch um 
just because it has a 3D and you have the touch screen right there all the time. Um, I don't know. I, I think that was a really cool thing they did, even though, again, it was probably like two years too late. Um, as most people just automatically got it on the Switch. I didn't even hear, I, I don't hear people really talking about the fact that this came out on 3DS. Yokai Watch 3! I forget this even came out. Okay. Uh, was this 2019? Let me see. I believe it was. Yeah, February 2019. I... I forgot about that. Man. I don't remember if Yokai Watch really hit it that big over here. I remember... I think it did pretty good, but it... I feel like they wanted it to be, like, a huge success, and it was only, like, a pretty decent success. And I think even, like, the success over in Japan started to wane. So I think they just kind of, like, eh. They, they stopped pushing it as hard. Wow. I mean, if anything's going to sell me on games I, I, I might love, it's definitely White Tanuki Mario. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Mario 3D Land. Pokemon the Ultra Sun Ultra Moon combo. Smash on 3DS. That was like, that's, uh, I, I'm still pretty much in the boat that I, I prefer 3DS to Wii U. I think they had better, it had better stages. Um, it had a better mode, which was Smash Run. And I just overall thought that it was cooler to see it on the 3DS than on the Wii U. And it ran very competently. I was I was pretty happy with that. We have the Pokemons. Mario Party of the Top 100. The yikes. We have the, the Fates games. Lego Jurassic World. Okay. <laughs> Name one thing that doesn't belong here. That's right, it's Conquest. Let's see. Mario. Let's see what well, let's see what's going on here. All right. Whoever's uh, whoever's in charge of the uh, 3DS eShop. <laughs> I I I have a question and uh, I don't know if anybody can answer, but Yeah, why? <laughs> why was literally, like, all of this, like, doubles <laughs> for the first half? Mario Sports Superstars. I still don't have that. Um, I don't really want it. I know that it can uh, Amiibo cards released with it, which is really bizarre. Um, like, as in, like, it wasn't even, like, just straight up Mario Amiibo cards. It was specifically Mario Sports Superstars cards. And they had, like, some horrendous photoshops on those cards. And I I honestly really want them. I think the, I think those would be kind of funny to uh, to collect. But then, uh, Mini Mario... What? That came out on 3DS? I thought that only came out on Wii U. That's interesting. I thought... That's, like, a free-to-play um, Mario vs. Donkey Kong game. Where you have to tap like one of those characters amiibos and then you get to play as them and their own set of levels and i thought that only came out on wii u but apparently not that's interesting here we have the new 3ds exclusives super nintendo games which could totally run on regular 3ds's but you know you know it's it's nintendo actually uh dr mario miracle cure I never, I never bought this. Um, it's only nine bucks. I might as well at some point. But one thing that I never liked. Let me see if it's here. Damn. <laughs> the the Mario model in this game, the three D Mario model that's like usually in the uh, in the in the right hand corner of the top screen. The Mario model in this game was so. It was just like, okay, okay, okay. It was right there. Um, if it comes up again. That Mario model is like so slightly off. It always bugged me. Like, look at that. Like, that just looks weirdly slightly off. It looks like a fan. It looks like a fan-made model. It's really bizarre. 
um, Puzzle Dragon, uh, Puzzle and Dragon Z plus Puzzle and Dragon Super Mario Brothers Edition. I kind of wish Nintendo did more of this. There, it's always weird what they decide to like do this kind of stuff with, and what they don't decide to do it with. Um, like from what I remember, they've done Minecraft. They did they did like Mario packs and that, and they did Puzzle and Dragons. Um, I'm trying to think of. There's definitely probably like one or two others. Uh, like in terms of just like a game that already exists, but it's a Mario version. Um, like not like Mario and Rabbids, not like that kind of crossover, but more so stuff, stuff like the Mario edition of this. Um, I'm surprised they haven't done this with like other things. Um, I'm surprised they specifically decided to do it with like Puzzle and Dragons, but that was like super big in Japan when, um, when this initially came out. If they, I feel like if Nintendo actually like if they really wanted to uh, do like, if, if they really wanted to make this like super successful, they should have uh, they should have made this a mobile game uh, as well as a 3DS game. If this if Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Brothers Edition was on mobile in Japan, that I, I think that would have blown up. Um, Tipping Stars, I think I technically have this because I bought this on Wii U, um, and you get. Um, you get the 3DS version for free, and vice versa, if, uh, whichever one you buy. Um, which, this is, like, one of the few times Nintendo ever did this. That was, like, one of the most annoying things in the Wii U era was the fact that, like, on the 3DS and Wii U, they were releasing NES and SNES, like, virtual console games. Um, and, like, one week they would release, like, Zelda 1 on NES on Wii U, and then, like, two weeks later, they'd release Zelda 1 on NES on 3DS. And they were the exact same ones, but you had to buy them separately. Um, and this was around the time that Sony was uh, doing, like, cross-buy with stuff on PlayStation Vita and PS3. And some stuff with PS4 as well. And uh, a lot of... I, I was really hoping Nintendo would start doing that. But this was, like, one of the only instances where they, where they did that kind of stuff. Uh, here we have some Game Boy Color games. Um... Super Mario Brothers. When did this release? I think this released kind of late. Cause like if this released back in like 2012, 2013, I know for a fact it would have bought it. Yeah, it was 2014. Yeah, that kind of came out a little too late for me to like want to buy it on 3DS. Cause like in some ways this is this is a really cool version of Mario One. Um, the problem is the screen. Like you could probably see there, the screen is really zoomed in. Um, but it's a really cool version. Like, it's, like, you can actually go backwards in the game. Uh, let me see. Photos with Mario! This is weird. This was, like, um, you would buy a 3DS eShop card where, uh, you know, like, a, you know, $20 credit for the eShop. And it would come with AR cards. And you could do little random stuff. I never, I never did this, but, uh, you know. Look at that, that's fun. Fool all your friends. That's like something where like, if I posted this, a blurry screenshot of this, I would fool everybody into thinking that I met, met the characters myself. Let's see, next. Mario Golf World Tour is a good game. Uh, Mario 3 is a good game. Mario Brothers on NES, it's pretty good. Uh, Mario Tennis, Mario Party Island Tour again. They're going. Oh, Minis on the Move. That was really cool. I don't know why they just. It's Mario and Donkey Kong. They're they're buddies in this one. Um, and this one was cool because like it was 3D, and it was like an overhead thing, and you had to like you had to create a path for the Mini Mario to go on. Why can't I? There it goes. You had to basically like use some like parts they would give you, and you would have to like put them in uh, on the map, so then the mini Mario would get to the goal safely. And I really like I, I like this style way more than the um, tra uh, traditional Mario versus Donkey Kong style because that style was really fun, but they just kept making it, and uh, I was pretty, uh, it was pretty fun to see them do this, but they, uh, they, they just kept making Mario vs. Donkey Kong instead. Got some NES titles here. Wrecking Crew. 
That's a must. When did that come out? If that came out in like 2018, I'm gonna be shocked. 2013, that makes sense. There's Mario 2, Lost Levels. Uh, I really like the Game Boy games on 3DS, uh, mainly because these didn't get re-released nearly as much as stuff like the NES games. Because like the NES games we already saw on like the Wii Virtual Console, so it was really cool to go to to have these like Game Boy games re-released for in some cases the first time, and a lot of them were excellent. Wario Land is really good. Um, I mainly I'm I'm a I'm a Donkey Kong '94 connoisseur. Uh, Mario one. Uh, oh, this is a this is the DSI War stuff. I was always really happy with how um, Nintendo handled like the DSI War games um, because they usually like pretty much with any other eShop or like new system Nintendo's put out, they just like throw the other system to the side. Like the Wii U, none of the Wii stuff, none of like the Wii Shop Channel stuff carried like like came over to the Nintendo eShop on Wii U. Like you could repurchase your Wii Virtual Console stuff, but um like all like like the WiiWare games, you had to go into like the Wii mode to access them or like to buy more of them. Um, here, like all the DSiWare stuff, like nearly all of it, some of them weren't available, but nearly all of it um, came on the 3DS. And uh, that was super cool. Like they just, it was just all available. And I really wish Nintendo would do that with like their other systems. But this is the only one where like, it was like nearly fully backwards compatible. Mario Clock? I was I was big into Mario Calculator. That was way more fun. Cause like clock, how, how much can you do with a clock? You can do so much more with a calculator. Um it was pretty cool. It was literally just a calculator, but it was a it was a very in-depth calculator. You could also translate between human and parakeet ears. That's fun. It's one player though. It's one player only though. Uh, Mario vs. Donkey Kong Minis March Again. That was also a weird one. I think I've said that a lot now, but... Um, I don't know if this was, like, its fully... It, its own game. I think it was. Because you had Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2. And then, like, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, like, Mini Land Mayhem, I think, was, like, the follow-up. And those two were, like, physical DS games. But then you had this one, which was only $8.00. And I don't remember any specific differences. <laughs> I don't remember anything that would make you go like, oh, like, I'd rather buy Mini Land Mayhem for $40 or $35, which was DS games at the time, instead of Mini's March Again for $8. I don't remember because like, look, you get the main game, there's a construction zone. This, is, this looks so similar to like the Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2 menu. Um, I don't remember what was different about this one. Because I feel like this gave you a similar amount of content, but it, it definitely probably gave you less. Dr. Mario Express, uh, I like this one. Um, I remember, uh, Dr. Mario looked, uh, way better in this game than he did in the, uh, Dr. Mario Miracle Cure. Um, probably because he wasn't a, like, straight up 3D model. I think he was, like, pre-rendered, but look at him. That's Mario. Dr. Mario Miracle Cure is like some sleep paralysis stuff. It's it's not it's not fun. I assume the game's fine, but the the, the Mario model is pretty bad. But they have Dr. Mario on Game Boy! The best version. That's bizarre. But you know what else is bizarre? The fact that they had this game playable in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. That was... That was... I... If I had to ask Nintendo anything, it would be, why was Dr. Mario Game Boy playable in Smash Bros. for Wii U? Mario's Picross is amazing. That's where I discovered my love for Picross. It's super fun. I don't think it's sold well at all on the Game Boy, but um, I really like this game. It was quite a bit of fun. That's Mario. 
See, I'm tempted to click on the Pokemon, but you know, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. But we can see Detective Pikachu, uh, Crystal. Uh, yeah, for some reason they had, like, different languages available, like, in the eShop. Which, I like, I just, I don't think they've done with other games, so I just... A little weird, but, you know, it's whatever. Let's see, that was a big deal when they finally released uh, not only the Game Boy Color games, but the Game Boy games on Virtual Console. They also did that very late. Um, I think it would have been a lot, a lot crazier if they did that, like, 2013, but they waited till like, 2016. And I, I think Crystal came out in, like, 2018, like, 2019, probably 2018. Yeah, look, it's all... Oh, Pokemon Picross, I forgot that came out! I think I played that for a second, because it was free. This was when Nintendo was trying to appease their shareholders, which were just crying about them, like, not doing, like, free-to-play stuff. So they were like, okay, alright, we'll make Rusty's Real Deal Baseball on 3DS. See, that's free. Um, Super Mystery Dungeon. Pokemon Rumble World, that's another free-to-play one. But that also got, like, a physical release. You could buy that for, like, 30 bucks. Shuffle was free-to-play, and that came out on mobile. Um, trading card. Oh, man, it's Puzzle League! It's Puzzle League! I love Puzzle League! <laughs> oh, man, I should have bought this. I never played Pokemon Puzzle League or Puzzle Challenge. Um, Pokemon Art Academy. That always looked like it was pretty fun. Battle Troze is pretty much this, pretty similar to, like, Shuffle, which is also similar to Pokemon Troze on the DS, but this one costs money, and Shuffle, uh, cost your soul. Uh, Pokemon Bank? Uh, there's the first Mystery Dungeon game. Uh, and then we have Pokemon Rumble Blast, which came out when, like, Nintendo refused to, like, make a, like, well, I mean, like, Pokemon Company and Game Freak or whatever. Uh, there just wasn't Pokemon games actually coming out for the 3DS. Um, they kept, they kept making the DS ones, man. And, uh, they put out Pokemon Rumble Blast, like, th in the 3DS's first year. Um, there's the Pokedex 3D. I did download that, like, because, uh, the original version was free, and then this is, like, the pro version, the pro model. Uh, and then Dream Radar was, like, came out alongside black and white too i believe zelda let's see let's see what's going on here I have a link to the past hyrule warriors legends that is one of the groggiest looking games i've ever seen <laughs> let me see a screenshot i really want to try playing this on this 2ds oh my god <laughs> this is amazing Again, it's charming to an extent. I don't want to experience... I want to experience that, but I don't actively want to experience Hyrule Warriors in that way. Uh, Triforce Heroes was okay. Like, it was fine. Um, it felt more like a Zelda mission mode than like an actual Zelda game. In Between Worlds, as previously stated, was amazing. Oracle Games... I really hope those get the remake treatment at some point, because, like, I know those are definitely, like... Th those are definitely, like, in the same league as Link's Awakening, and I love Link's Awakening, but... My God, are these hard to go back to <laughs> after playing Link's Awakening uh, on Switch. It's just, like... Ugh. Like, I know these games can look... S like, can just be so much better. Just... Ugh. I just want it. Yeah, and then there's Link's Awakening DX. When did that when did that release on the 3DS eShop? Let's see. What the come on. <laughs> I like how some uh some virtual console games have like the release date of when they were released on the 3DS eShop and this one has the release date of when it originally released. Um let's go check out Kirby. Let's see what's going on there. There's quite a bit of Kirby stuff here. There was Battle Royale. I never, uh, I never played Battle Royale. 
Um, same with like most of the downloadable Kirby games, like Blowout Blast. I never, I never played uh, that. Uh, Team Kirby Clash. I did not know Dream Course is on the 3DS. That's pretty fun. Uh, Planet Robobot is my favorite Kirby game. It is fantastic. Kirby Fighters Deluxe and DDD's Dream Dash Deluxe. Or Drum Dash, I'm sorry. I'm I'm very sorry. Um, 3D Classics. These had so much potential, and they only did like six of them. And it was super lame. But, uh, and like, th like half of them were like really weird, and half of them were like really cool. Because this was like... This was like a full-blown... This was this was a full-blown remake of Kirby's Adventure. And they did Kid Icarus and Excite Bike. But then they also did... They did Xevious, uh, Twinbee, I believe. And Urban Champion. And I will never understand why they picked these six games specifically. It was really bizarre. But I, I remember them saying uh, they they wanted to do more, but they couldn't because they were so difficult to do. Um, I, I was hoping they would do, like, a similar lineup of games on, like, the Wii U called HD Classics, where they uh, they went back to certain games and they, uh, they gave them the HD treatment. Or, or like, I don't know, like, hand-drawn 2D sprites or stuff like that. Uh... Puccini Yoshi's Woolly World. This game always looked super impressive on the 3DS, in my opinion. Like it didn't look that much worse than the Wii U game. Like okay, <laughs> viewing it on the 3DS itself, it looks way better uh, than like it does here. But like still, it's just like looking at that, like from far away, it looks pretty identical to the three uh, to the Wii U game. I think it's uh, I think it was a really impressive port. Um, I never bought it, but, uh, I always thought it was, uh, very impressive. And then there's Yoshi's New Island. Uh, we can move on to Sonic games. Let's see what's going on here. I never, uh, the only Sonic game... The only, like, original Sonic game that released on 3DS that I owned was Sonic Generations. And it's not that great. Um, I heard Fire and Ice was okay. Um, the 3D Sonic games were okay, like, the, uh, the remakes, um, but they were still, like, they were still fundamentally the same game. Uh, Shattered Crystal was a bit not great, <laughs> um, apparently Fire and Ice was, like, okay for what it was, it just wasn't anything amazing at all. Um, that was just really bizarre that they, that they did that, because, <laughs> like, uh, the Sonic Boom fiasco happened, and then, like, what well, was it, like... I think it was literally like six months later they announced Fire and Ice. It was literally like the next spring they announced a sequel. And I think that was when like the Sonic social media accounts became a lot more snarky. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Sonic Lost World was always pretty impressive because like it was like fully 3D. Or at least like, you know, it had 3D sections where like Sonic Generations on 3DS was kind of dumb <laughs> and it didn't have this. I thought that was pretty cool that they actually had like a 3D Sonic game on a handheld. Um, but Sonic Generations, like, this was like one of the biggest game, like, one of the most like missed potential games out there because like they had, um, like that's that's modern Sonic and that's like two classic Sonic. They're both 2D, and like, yeah, you can boost in this one, but it's just like, does, is that really enough to warrant like two? different like uh, styles of sonic like I, I don't think so that the game gear games um and yeah and then all stars racing transform i don't actually know what this looks like on 3ds who knows for all i know it could be a card game let's see come on uh i was waiting for this to like <laughs> I was waiting for this for this image to look better, but it's 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 just this poor quality on screen. Uh, I won't like it. I I was waiting for like the image to load, but it just it it just looks this bad. 
So, okay. What did it say? It offers in-app per in-game purchases. What does Sonic and All Stars Racing offer on the 3DS? It might be because it's the demo, or it said the demo. I don't. I don't know. I didn't know that version had DLC. If it does, Minecraft on new Nintendo 3DS that came out. <laughs> Mario Kart 7. Uh, Pokemon Ultra Sun. New Super Mario Brothers 2. I will live and die by saying uh, I think that's better than Mario Brothers U. Um, like Mario Brothers U, I, I think like it was a little too. I think Nintendo was a little too like like uppity about it being like oh wow like did, did you see this this one's actually original like look we're doing new things but it's just like it didn't amount to anything we're new super mario brothers 2 it knew what it was <laughs> it was it didn't it didn't try to be anything that it wasn't it was literally like yeah we're shameless we we don't have we don't have anything to offer you new but it was kind of like i don't know the coin gimmick was just enjoyable i i, I prefer i prefer playing this to uh to you i if if i had to pick any new Super Mario Brothers game to go back to right now, it would probably be two. Don't tell anybody I said that. Metroid Samus Returns. I hope that gets like an HD, an HD remake or just a port or anything like that. Because I really want to play that, but God, I just don't. <laughs> I just don't want to use my 3DS right now. You ever get those like, it's, it's like certain consoles go through this like phase where um they're they're old enough to the point where you don't really want to play them but they're too new to be considered like retro or for you to get like super nostalgic about it that's kind of where the 3ds is right now like it's in that and it's it's in that point where i'm like i'd want nothing to do with this right now uh but but nintendo wanted stuff to do with it in 2017 because they released fire, fire emblem warriors on it are you sure why not? Games for kids. Oh, great. Great, yeah. My Nintendo. It exists. What's... Why are they showing me these? Are these, like, games that, uh... At this current moment are on sale or, like, have, like, a coupon associated with them on Club Nintendo? Chibi Robo Photo Finder! That's about the closest you're gonna get to an actual Chibi Robo game on 3DS. It's not... I haven't played this one, but I know that it's actually, like, it's okay for what it is. I mean, it's a Chibi Robo game that focuses on, like, AR and taking pictures, but it's it's still, like, it's, it's a Chibi Robo game, kinda. I always wanted to play Metopia, Metopia because it was, it, it felt like a spiritual successor to Tomodachi Life, but I don't think the Miis actually talk. Like, in Tomodachi Life, they would do, like, a robotic uh, text-to-speech program to make your Miis talk. And this one, I think there's just dialogue boxes, and I feel like that's way lamer. That, that doesn't make it nearly as funny. Sushi Striker, um, I kind of want to try this out on 3DS. Uh, I played it on Switch, and I liked it, but it wasn't, it was not worth, like, 50 bucks. Because, like, the gameplay was, like, really satisfying and addictive, but, like, once you play one round of that game, you've seen the entire game, in my opinion. Like, it's it's the same thing the entire time. I know a lot of people love Fantasy Life. I was always interested in it, but I never tried it out. I heard Style Savvy was actually pretty good for what it was. Like, it, it was actually, like, a pretty decent game. Um, Dylan's Rolling Western? I never played any of these games. And there's Tank Troopers. That was, like, one of the last big 3DS eShop releases Nintendo did. It was only 8 bucks. This was, like, 2016, 2017. Damn. And when did Dragon Quest VIII come out? That came out, like, 2017. And that came out, like, four months after... Dragon Quest 7 came out on 3DS. These games haven't didn't get localized for like the longest time. It was ridiculous. Let's see. I'm going to just hard assume that games for kids isn't gonna give us anything like that interesting. Oh, let me let me just do a quick a quick little check. Alright. Uh Wow, uh well Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Alright. Style an, a different style savvy. Yokai Watch 2s. 
Disney Art Academy, anyone? Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. Free theme? Wow. Well, they have the Mega Man Legacy Collection. Um, that was kind of... That... I'm going to be repeating myself here. That was kind of weird on the 3DS. Um, I think most of these games were available as virtual console releases. So it's just kind of like, okay, I mean, sure. <laughs> it's, it, they're better in the Legacy Collection, but it's just like, it just, it was a bit unnecessary. I'll say that. Because at that point, they, they didn't release it for Wii U at the time. It was like 2015 when it came out, so I was like, why isn't this on Wii U? Out, out on Wii U, like, it's Mega Man. <laughs> like, a lot of Mega Man's audience is on Wii U. Let's see what the best sellers are on 3DS this week. Pokemon Bank. Netflix. Uh, New Leaf. Uh, all three of these do not surprise me. Uh, and most, and pretty much all of these are all free, except for Animal Crossing and Pokemon Crystal. Uh, Steel Diver Subwards. That's another one that, like, the shareholders were like, Nintendo, make free-to-play games. And they were like, okay. And, and they made Steel Diver <laughs> free-to-play. Uh, Nintendo Badger Arcade. This was super cool. This was, like, uh, uh, this was a free-to-play thing, but I think they did it. It was, like, such a Nintendo thing to do where they would, like, have these, like, crane games where you could get little stickers that you could put on your home screen. That's really fun. I always really like that. Iron Fall Invasion. I, I, I gotta see what this is for it to be on, uh, on the bestsellers list. This sounds familiar. 2015. What? Was this in a direct? I feel like this might have been in a direct. That's weird. Uh, let's see. Swap Doodle. So this was like the replacement for Swap Note. Which Swap Note was a replacement for Picto Chad. But I never got into either one of them. Stretch Mo. I love the Pushmo games, but uh, I didn't play. <laughs> As in, I love Pushmo and Pushmo World on Wii U, and I did not play anything outside of that. Uh, but Stretchmo was like, that was free, but you could uh, you could buy the re the entire game like right off the gate. It was literally just a way for Nintendo to like test waters and just be like, oh, let's see if this will do better if we uh, like have it for free here. But then when you download it, they're like, oh, you have to you have to buy the game you know like we're not we're not a charity i really liked rusty's real deal baseball this was this was honestly a really fun idea and it was a pretty fun game too um basically you would have you would haggle with old rusty for the prices of like he had to um he was selling you little baseball mini games and um and you could haggle with him to pay real world money for the game so you could like try to like get him down to like as low as you could possibly get him uh to buy these baseball mini games and the mini games were pretty fun um i really like this i, I really like this game um i mean i could consider going to page 20 but uh we'll we'll, we'll move on for now games on sale let's see if uh let's see if there's any uh any solid deals going on right now uh, I have never played any of the Cooking Mama games on 3DS. It's really unfortunate. Cube Creator 3D, Bit Dungeon Plus, Coaster Creator 3D, Adventure Bar Story. I've heard of this one. Uh, Cube Creator DX, Adventure Labyrinth Story, Beyblade Evolution, Ping Pong Trick Shot 2. It is a slow week for the 3DS. Turkey, please. Final Fantasy Explorers. Um, yeah, sure. 
Let's see. Let's see what the what old page two is uh has cooking for us here. Dragon sinker. <laughs> I I never realized how much just indie garbage is on the 3ds. Not saying all indie games are garbage. Far from it. But as in, pretty much anybody can put a th put a game on 3ds. It seems. Is in okay. Uh, I know nothing about these games, but this one looks fine. I'm not sure about this one. I want, I'm not going to say anything. But consider this. It's only available on new 3DS. And it looks like this. Okay. Uh, Theater Rhythm. Shakedown Hi Hawaii. I didn't, I didn't know that came out on 3DS. <laughs> when did this come out? Like 2019? Was this 20? Yeah, this was 2019. Oh my god. So this was a this was a sequel to um, Retro City Rampage, from what I remember. Yeah, it's a, like I said, it's a it's a, it's a slow week for the 3DS. Games at a good price. So there's games on sale, but then you have games that are just at a good price. Let's see what uh let's see what Nintendo means by this. Quarters, please. Uh, are these just, like, literally the cheapest games possible? <laughs> yes. Squar Cat. My god. Uh, I, I didn't know the 3DS was so good. Let's see what new releases there are. I'm, I'm interested to see what came out recently. Oh, Quarters, please, is a recent release? Oh my god! Also, that's surprising to me. I mean, it's not surprising, but it's also surprising considering that, like, there are 3DS games coming out in 2020, but there apparently hasn't been a 3DS release since February. Uh, there's Shovel Knight. Um, but that's... And then there's Shakedown Hawaii. So, wow. that So, Shakedown Hawaii came out in September of 2019, and these are the only games to have released on the 3DS since then. That's crazy. Let's see. Uh, what's next here? Games with DLC? What else, what else do we have? Oh my god. <laughs> I always... Uh, applications. Uh, I'll, we'll skip around a little bit here. I want to see what's going on in applications. There's Swap Doodle. Butterfly Inchworm Animation 2. Honestly, I think, so Inchworm anima Animation, I believe, was on DSiWare, and I remember downloading it, but I remember not playing it that much. I think I tried it, and then I was like, eh, like, I, I preferred Flipnote for, like, uh, quick animations on 3DS. I'm, um, I, I, I should download this. This is too good. This is, uh, if you don't have Smash Brothers for 3DS, but you want to use your 3DS as a controller for Smash Brothers for Wii U... There's a 3DS app for you. I honestly want to download this. <laughs> I honestly really do. I am in the movie. Uh, Colors 3D. I really like this one. Um, you could uh, you could make 3D art. Remember the uh, just making the art was really fun. Uh, it was a really it was a really fun little uh. Why? <laughs> All right. I like how uh, out of everything, it, out of everything on Netflix advertised, they they just have to show like, oh, yeah, okay, the nut jobs on there, I'm sold. Inchworm animation, there it is. A diary, Nintendo countdown calendar. What is this? Is this like a what? With Nintendo Countdown Calendar, you can add and track all of your important events in a fun and exciting countdown format. Simply set your personal... So it's literally just a calendar. I, n I never knew Nintendo did that. <laughs> oh, let's, 
Let's go back. We, we've seen our fair share of applications. Amiibo! Is this just going to show us Amiibo-supported games? Yes. Yes, that is literally it. I remember one game that was really weird that... Oh yeah, there you go with weird again. Um, one game that I thought... It was really weird that it didn't contain amiibo support was Triforce Heroes. Because that game was all about, um, like, costumes. You could get costumes for Link to wear. And they weren't opposed to, like, the costumes being out of place. Because there was, like, a sprite art one. And, oh, okay. <laughs> Literally just the only future releases thing available is the Nintendo Direct. I would like to play that, thank you. Um... It wasn't like the costumes were, like, super out of place. As in, like, they weren't opposed to the costumes being, like, out of place or, like, weird canonically, I guess. Because they had, like, a sprite art Link one where you look like a Minecraft character. Um, so, like, it was really weird to me that you couldn't play, like, uh, you couldn't, like, tap a Mario amiibo and um, get, like, a Mario costume or something, and then you could use that as, like, a fire rod or something, where, like, you could, like, throw fire from your fist or something. My god, this is low quality. All right. Uh, I, I just like watching this on the 3DS screen. <laughs> this is very, uh, this is very entertaining. I mean, Luigi's Mansion 3 did not look that great in this original trailer. So it doesn't look super out of place on the 3DS, but uh, they ended up they ended up cleaning it up. It looks quite good now. Newest videos. Is it literally going to be the uh, the Nintendo Direct? It's Slime Slayer trailer with song lyrics. Uh, Persona Q2. I'm surprised I haven't seen that even on the eShop yet. Yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a slow it's been a slow year for the 3DS so far. Featured on Nintendo Switch, is it just gonna show the Nintendo Direct thing? I wouldn't doubt it. As in like the Nintendo Direct from September of 2018, but no, they the only thing they show is the Nintendo Direct Mini. Have the Arms Accolades trailer. Is this the entire Switch presentation? I believe it is. It should be. Yes, it is. This was this was a fantastic uh, time to be a Nintendo fan. It, it was just so nice to finally like experience joy again after 2016. It was, uh, that, that was a fun night, because it was really late for, I mean, like, it wasn't, like, super late, I mean, it was, like, probably midnight or so, it was, like, 11 p.m. when it started, but it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a really fun time. Only on new Nintendo 3DS, we're gonna see a bunch of, bunch of SNES stuff, and Runbo, Runbo was exclusive to new 3DS. It's so like, I go every day, and I always, I, I go by my daily saying, you can't forget about Rumbo. Virtual Console, I mean, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta check out Virtual Console, come on. They, uh, they did some interesting stuff on 3DS Virtual Console. I specifically remember they had, uh, the mysterious Murasame Castle, that was cool to see. Um, but, it was pretty basic stuff like you know they had uh shantae was cool because you know that that's one of the rarest game boy color games out there it was cool that that you know actually you know that actually released in a format that most people could play um game gear stuff uh wario land 3 but i was always really bummed out that they never officially released game boy advance games to the masses uh, that was super lame Um, SNES stuff, they got a little, they got a little wacky. You know, they had Dracula X. But again, SNES stuff came out, like, 2016, and it was new 3DS only. And honestly, at that point, I kind of stopped caring a lot about the 3DS, so it was a little eh. 
But Game Boy Color, you know, they had the Mega Man Extreme games, which was, uh... Those were pretty neat additions. They put out the Donkey Kong Land games alongside Donkey Kong Country games on Wii U. I remember that. Let's see. Do we have Street Fighter 2? That's your thing. The Mega Man Game Boy games? I know, uh... I only downloaded Dr. Wily's Revenge, which, that's just kind of like, uh... For Mega Man on the Game Boy, it's pretty good. Uh, but I know most people swear by Mega Man 5 on Game Boy, or Mega Man V. Let's see. Yoshi! Yoshi's Cookie come I, I think Yoshi's Cookie cannot be officially re-released because uh, it was made by Bulletproof Software. And I think there's, like, copyright problems with that. Um, they, they developed a lot of, like, the puzzle stuff. Um, like Tetris on Game Boy. Um, they developed a lot of that kind of stuff. And Tetris on Game Boy did come out on 3DS, but it got taken down. Later on. They had Rayman! Rainbow, Rayman Game Boy Color! I gotta see what this looks like, because I honestly don't even remember what it looks like. See, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of these Game Boy Color games, you know, they they may not... Oh, wow, that's actually super... That's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> that actually looks pretty impressive. It probably doesn't play that well, I'd assume, but that's actually really impressive. I really like stuff like this. I... I like them re-releasing these, like, Game Boy Color and Game Boy ports because, like, the 3DS gave them an, ex an excuse to actually do that. Um, because now they'd be like, why would, we do why would we do that when we could just release, like, the NES version of these games or something? Um, if it's, like, a Game Boy version of an, of an NES game. And I'm like, that's fair, but the Game Boy versions don't get re-released as much. And I think they're way cooler to look back on because a lot of these NES games, I'm not like actively playing because like, oh man, a lot of these are like super fun. They're more so kind of like interesting to play now. Um, I'm not saying like no NES games are fun nowadays, but NES games, a lot of them haven't aged well, but you pop them in because they're more so like kind of interesting to look back on. Um, but the the only English, uh, not English, but the only localization, not even localization, they didn't do anything. To, it's literally just the Famicom game, just on 3DS. Um, but the only North American release of the mysterious Murasame Castle is on 3DS. There. Uh, Takamaru's in, like, Smash Brothers as an assist trophy and stuff like that. But, um, and I'm trying to think of the other areas he was in i mean like he was he's kind of like this I, I mean technically takamaru is like featured in nintendo land and stuff like that um so it's just really weird that the only release of this game in north america was on the 3ds shop bayana commando elite forces was developed by nintendo <laughs> i do know that Well, it was published by Nintendo, but it was also developed by Nintendo. Which is weird, because that's a Capcom game. Pinball Revenge of the Gator! Was that like a HAL Laboratory game? One last page. We gotta see what's... Gotta see what's going on here. Toki Tori. Good stuff. Adventures of Lolo. I... Cannot recall what Tumble Pop is all about. But thank God they released Street Fighter 2010 on, on 3DS. Uh, and Wario's Woods. You can't you can't have the 3DS without Wario's Woods. Uh this was a way forward game on Game Boy Color. It's pretty interesting. I thought this was I thought this was page eight. Uh Oh well, we got we got the gist. We got the gist. What else is? 
Well, either way, I mean, a lot of this stuff is pretty much going to be the same thing. <laughs> I think we're just going to see a lot of repeats. But that was the 3DS eShop. And that was how I spend a Sunday night.